Today we are talking about the virology. Virology. So we say this semester we talking about the microorganism. And the microorganism relationship with non-living human being, relationship with the illness. We use last two class, we talking about the bacteria. And we use another two class. Today and the next time, we talking about the virus. Then we talking about some others. Yeah, some others like the guy. So that's a uh, microbiology. Yeah, microbiology. We talking about the microorganism. So microorganism more relationship with the human being. Or in other words, they usually cause the people illness by bacterial virus. Another one is the guy. Yeah. That's the three popular. And the third like first the two is more popular. First two is more popular. We finish bacterial part. Yeah, we finish bacterial part. Today we go to virus part. So that's we say that's virology. Yeah, virology. So we still go to our video first. Today we talking about basic virology. Virology is the study of viruses. It focuses on the following aspects of viruses. Their structure, classification, and evolution. Their ways to infect and exploit host cells for reproduction. Their interaction with host organism physiology and immunity. The diseases they cause the techniques to isolate and culture them, and their use in research and therapy. Virology is a subfield of microbiology. Virus classification. A major branch of virology is virus classification. Viruses can be classified according to the host cell they infect. Animal viruses. Plant viruses. Fungal viruses. And bacteriophages. Viruses infecting bacterium, which include the most complex viruses. Another classification uses the geometrical shape of their capsid which often a helix or an icosahedron, or the virus's structure. For example presence or absence of a lipid envelope. Viruses range in size from about 30 nanometers to about 450 nanometers which means that most of them cannot be seen with light microscopes. The shape and structure of viruses has been studied by electron microscopy, NMR spectroscopy, and X-ray crystallography. The most useful and most widely used classification system distinguishes viruses according to the type of nucleic acid. They use as genetic material and the viral replication method they employ to coax host cells into producing more viruses. DNA viruses, divided into double-stranded DNA viruses and single-stranded DNA viruses. RNA viruses, divided into positive-sense single-stranded RNA viruses, negative-sense single-stranded RNA viruses, and the much less common double-stranded RNA viruses. The latest report by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses 2005, lists 5,450 viruses organized in over 2,000 species, 287 genera, 73 families, and 3 orders. Virologists also study subviral particles, infectious entities notably smaller, 
and simpler than viruses. Viral diseases. One main motivation for the study of viruses is the fact that they cause many important infectious diseases. Among them the common cold, influenza, rabies, measles, many forms of diarrhea, hepatitis, polio, smallpox, and AIDS. Herpes simplex causes cold sores and genital herpes and is under investigation as a possible factor in Alzheimer's. Some viruses, known as oncoviruses, contribute to the development of certain forms of cancer. The best studied example is the association between human papillomavirus and cervical cancer. Almost all cases of cervical cancer are caused by certain strains of this sexually transmitted virus. Another example is the association of infection with hepatitis B and hepatitis C viruses and liver cancer. The study of the manner in which viruses cause disease is viral pathogenesis. The degree to which a virus causes disease is its virulence. When the immune system of a vertebrate encounters a virus, it may produce specific antibodies, which bind to the virus and neutralize its infectivity, or mark it for destruction. Antibody presence in blood serum is often used to determine whether a person has been exposed to a given virus in the past. Monoclonal antibodies, specific to the virus, are also used for detection, as in fluorescence microscopy. The second defense of vertebrates against viruses. Cell-mediated immunity involves immune cells known as T-cells. The body cells constantly display short fragments of their proteins on the cell's surface. And if a T cell recognizes a suspicious viral fragment there, the host cell is destroyed, and the virus-specific T cells proliferate. This mechanism is jump-started by certain vaccinations. RNA interference An important cellular mechanism found in plants, animals, and many other eukaryotes. Most likely evolved as a defense against viruses. A very early form of vaccination, known as variolation was developed several thousand years ago in China. It involved the application of materials from smallpox sufferers in order to immunize others. In 1717, Lady Mary Wortley Montagu observed the practice and attempted to popularize it in Britain, but encountered considerable resistance. In 1796 Edward Jenner developed a much safer method, using cowpox to successfully immunize a young boy against smallpox. And this practice was widely adopted. Vaccinations against other viral diseases followed, including the successful rabies vaccination. By Louis Pasteur in 1886, the nature of viruses, however, was not clear to these researchers. In 1892, the Russian biologist Dmitry Ivanovsky used a Chamberland filter to try to isolate the bacteria that caused tobacco mosaic disease. His experiments showed that crushed leaf extracts from infected tobacco plants remained infectious after filtration. Ivanovsky reported a minuscule infectious agent or toxin capable of passing the filter may be being produced by a bacterium. In 1898 Martinus Bijerink repeated Ivanovsky's work, but went further and passed the filterable agent from plant to plant, found the action undiminished, and concluded it infectious, replicating in the host, and thus not a mere toxin. He called it contagium vivum fluidum. The question of whether the agent was a living fluid or a particle was however still open. In 1903 it was suggested for the first time that transduction by viruses might cause cancer. The cause of the devastating Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 was initially unclear. In late 1918, French scientists showed that a filter-passing virus could transmit the disease to people and animals. 
In 1926 it was shown that scarlet fever is caused by a bacterium that is infected by a certain bacteriophage. In 1931 it was shown that influenza virus could be grown in fertilized chicken eggs, a method that is still used today to produce vaccines. In 1937, Max Thyler managed to grow the yellow fever virus in chicken eggs and produced a vaccine from an attenuated virus strain. This vaccine saved millions of lives and is still being used today. In 1963, the hepatitis B virus was discovered by Barrick Bloomberg who went on to develop a hepatitis B vaccine. This is the basic aspect of the history of virology and basic virology. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's go back. So that's the basically like a history about how like a virus, like a people find it right away. And from the beginning, people didn't name it virus. And later on, it's more clear and clear. And then find how to prevent various kind of illness. So let's talk here about like what virus look like. So the virus, yeah, virus, it much, it's much smaller compared with bacteria. Like in the first class, we're talking about the size of the virus compared with the virus and the bacteria. Virus is more smaller. And the virus no cells. Yeah, virus no cells. They only have DNA or RNA. That's belong to genes. That's belong to genes. But not both. Yeah, not both. So basically, if a virus try to produce it or reproduction another virus, they will need both. But they only have one. So what do they use? They use body cells, either DNA or RNA. So that's truly more damage the body cells. We're talking about some detail later. But generally we say virus only have DNA or only have RNA. And they usually covered by a protein called that's protected the genes inside. And some of the virus, yeah, not all the virus, some of the virus, they have another nuclear protein membrane cover outside. That part we call the envelopment. envelopment. So that's generally we talking about virus. We say virus don't have cells, don't have nucleus. They only have DNA or RNA. They don't have cytoplasma. Yeah, not many liquid inside. And they don't have other microorganisms. So that's the difference with bacteria and the body cells. So that means when virus try to reproduce itself, it must be missing the cells. We're talking about host cells here. So virus can infections animals. can infection humans, can infection even like plants, yeah. and they also even can infection bacteria. 
Various infections. Whatever, if they try to reproduction, they try. They must be go to inside of cells. Whatever humans, animal, plants, or bacteria, and then they can reproduce. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, if we talk about the big category. Usually, we put a human being belong to kind of animal, belong to kind of animal. So pretty similar human being cells with animal cells. And then we say they use the host cells, include all of them. Then they can get energy. And then they can produce in the protein, they can make a copy for themselves. So that means basically virus we talk about, they can live in outside of the cells for some time, but they couldn't reproduce it. Yeah, they couldn't reproduce it. If they try to reproduce it, they must be go to inside the cell and reproduce it. And the Reproducing way is different with virus. Uh, different with bacteria. Yeah. Bacteria, when we talk about bacteria reproducing, it's kind of one to two, and then two to four, four to eight, so that kind of way, that's the way give a special name for bacteria. But virus is totally different uh, story. When, when virus go to inside of body cells, when they reproduce it, they like a kind of connected producing there. In short of time, they can produce it like a hundred of them. That means even faster. Compare with bacteria. When bacteria reproduce, it, they say it's pretty faster. It's pretty faster. But virus reproduce it even faster compared with the bacteria. So that's some difference when they compare the virus and the bacteria. And then we compare the virus with the cells. Yeah, with the cells. We can think about a normally animal cell or even human body cell here. So we're talking about the nuclear acid here. Yeah, nuclear acid. In Normally cells, in normally cells, we say is will have both DNA and RNA. But in the virus cells, we say they maybe have DNA, they maybe have RNA. It's depending by different kind of virus. Yeah, it's depending. Some virus they have DNA. Some viruses they have DNA, but never have both. And then we talk about the ribosomes. Ribosomes is a kind of small organism inside the cells. It's producing very important function for cells metabolism. There. In the cells, we say including the human cells, animal cells, even in the plant cells and the bacteria. Yeah, bacteria still belong to cells. But they don't have in the virus. And the same thing, yeah, same thing for another small organism inside the cells. Not in the virus. And the proteins. Yeah, proteins. 
compare with the cells. Inside the cells, we have a lot, a lot of protein. Inside the virus, we still have protein, but not that much. And azimis. Azimis coming from the protein, or maybe we can say that's a kind of form of protein. They have special kind of function. In the virus, they only have a few of them. There are just a small amount in there, or even some virus. They totally don't have. But inside the cells, they have a lot of them. Then we're talking about the memories, the yeah, cells memories. Cells memories usually combination nucleus means fat with the protein together. So that kind of memory there. Yeah. In the cells, they have the memory in all the cells covered there. But in the virus, yeah, in the virus, they only on some of the virus, the form like an environment kind of form in there. But some virus, they don't have. And the reproduction way, yeah, reproduction way, uh, we say for the cells, we follow reproduction way, one to two, two to four, that we name it mitosis. We will learn the physiology, we talk about the human body cells, we use this special kind of words, mitosis. J means reproduction way from one to two, and two to four, four to eight, eight to 16, something like that. And the body cell exactly same like uh, the mother or father cell, and cell. And the similar way happens uh, in bacterial reproductions, but we just use another word. We didn't use uh, mitosis for bacterial infection. We just use other words, but still the same way, still the same way. So that happens in the cells reproduction, but not in the virus. So virus reproduction, just one virus, they can continually produce in hundreds of them. Yeah. So that's uh, some difference between the virus and the cells. Then we're talking about the structure of the virus. So still remember, when we talking about the structure of bacteria, we say that's a cell memory there. And some nuclear in there, yeah, it's pretty simple, simple nuclear compared with the, the body cells. And they still have cytoplasma part when there is liquid in there and some small microorganisms inside. And outside of the plasma memory, that's the cell wall. That's the cell wall. That's for most bacteria. That's for most bacteria. They are not only have plasma memory, they also have cell wall. For some special kind of bacteria, they have more thick kind of cover, they call capsule. That's outside of cell wall. And then they have some bacteria, they have pretty long kind of tail in there, maybe couple of them for one bacteria, maybe even a hundred. And also they have some tiny, tiny, small, like a body hair kind of fear in there, outside of the bacteria. So that's the basic structure for bacteria. 
Now we talking about worries. Yeah, now we talking about worries. So worries, yeah, worries is much much smaller. Yeah, it's much much smaller. Uh, so their shape, they still have different kind of shape. Yeah, still kind of different kind of shape, but much much smaller. And the bacterial shape basically depending by their proteins called shape in there. So that's basically, but it is much smaller. The pretty commonly still round shape, yeah, still round shape, but they truly have some kind of a different shape in there. So bacteria separate by different way, yeah, and the virus separate by different way also. So virus is pretty commonly separated way by a the DNA or RNA. So we don't have special kind of stem for virus. So gram stem only used for bacteria, not uh, able to use for virus. Yeah. But we can separate it by if they have DNA or if they have RNA. So they say DNA virus or RNA virus. And we say some virus, they will have some special cover, we call it development. Yeah, development. So DNA virus, some of them have special cover. Some of them, no special cover. And the same thing for RNA virus. Still, something have special cover. Some of them don't have special cover. So that's the basic way we separate virus for different kind of virus. So that's an example here for virus. We say virus always have genes. Yeah. So in the genes, they may have DNA or they may have RNA. They never have both. So like maybe RNA or maybe DNA in here, they may be different shape. They cover it, yeah, cover it. Some proteins specially covered, yeah, specially covered. So that's for all the bacteria will have this kind of cover. They may have different shape. So we say various shape depending by this kind of cover, yeah. So that's for like all the bacteria, just the basic structure like this. So you can see how simple it is, yeah, how simple it is. And then we have, we talk here about some bacteria. They may have another special cover. We call that a special cover, available, yeah, available cover. So that's basically in this part. But that may be not for all the bacteria. Like we go back the picture here. We say for DNA virus, some of them have that special cover. Some of them don't have. If they don't have, they just simply kind of some RNA or DNA in there, and just some different kind of shape cover, just like this. 
Yeah. Yeah, pretty simple. Yeah, very pretty simple. They don't have little bit liquid between it. Yeah, just little bit liquid between it. It's not like a bacteria, have a lot of things in there. So that's the virus. Certainly, if they have another special cover developer, they may have another one. But it's still smaller, yeah, still smaller. So that's, they say, some of them, they have another big cover here, composed by the protein, composed by the protein. And uh, on the outside of this protein kind of cover, for some bacteria, they may also have some another protein, yeah, another protein connected with the development developers air, so shape like this, yeah, there are a lot of So that's basically the structure of the virus. So you can see how simple it is, yeah, how simple it is. And the virus reproduction, yeah, virus reproduction. It's a difference with uh, the bacteria. Yeah. So virus reproduction, uh, you can see the picture here. So like some virus, they can use this one. Thinking about virus, yeah. They touching the body cells first. So that's the body cells in here, the body cells in here. We say we have cells, membrane, we have nucleus here, we have a lot of protein inside, and we have some RNA, and we have some admins, yeah. And after virus are touching the cell, they gradually go to inside of the cell. Yeah, they gradually go to inside the cell. And then we say virus only have DNA or RNA. If they try to form the new virus, they need to use the body cells energies or maybe admin or protein or RNA or DNA. So they use all the inside cells, the material there, they form the lot of lot of bacteria, and then they re re renew, go to outside of cells. So that's basically the cells growth in way, the cells growth in way. So we say they can replicate about hundreds of them. So about 10 hours producing hundreds of them and then renew to outside of cell. And uh, certainly, yeah, certainly, they use all the cells energy and the materials to produce the virus. Finally, the cells will be dead. The body cells will be So that's basically, yeah, that's basically the virus producing way. It's different with uh, bacteria. Yeah, different with bacteria. So virus cause illness. Virus cause illness, mainly by two aspects. Yeah, by two aspects. So certainly, yeah, certainly, they invading the cells first. Yeah, invading the cells first. Like we just talking about the, the reproduction, 
they are touching the cell and then go to inside the cell and uh, use the cell's materials, energies, to reproductions itself. But uh, if only the single cells, yeah, if only the single cells got uh, virus infections, truly not caused the severe kind of situation. But generally say they will invade lot of lot of cells later. They may start from the single cells, but after the reproduction, hundreds of them, and then they may invade hundreds even more of the cells. Certainly that will cause the patient's reactions or symptoms. So that means cause the patient sick or illness. So they say after cells, yeah, after cells get virus infections, yeah, after cells get virus infection. The cells may be dead. Yeah, the cells may be dead. That may be happens in most cases, in most cases. And they may possible changing the cells, yeah, maybe changing the cells. Like originally just one nuclear in there, now they change the cells, go to more nuclear inside. Change the cells shape, certainly changing the cells functions. So that's we talking about some cancers, maybe after some virus infection. Because when people body cell, most of the people body cell only have one nuclear. If they change it to lot of nuclear inside, they will change their function. They will not control their growth. They will division, division to lot of, lot of cells, gradually, gradually form a tumor there. So we are kind of case, so certainly it's cancer. And another possible, yeah, another possible, they are not changing the cells, nuclear number getting more, but they changing the structure of the like genes, yeah, genes. So when genes are changing, still function changing still possible producing later for the cancer cells. Like uh, not control the cells normally growing, they continually growing and form a tumor or cancer. So that's the third aspect, third aspect. And they also possible no changing, yeah, no changing. Yeah, so the virus evading some cells, they holding there. Yeah. They can live in inside cells for a long, long term. And uh, later on, like we talking about bacteria or spray, they sleep there, yeah, they sleep there. After long term, like we still talking about what's caused the illness, why the passenger side, why body immunity systems or body junky side to see the balance. If body junky deficiency and then passenger cause the illness. A pretty simple case we we'll talk about later. We we'll talk about the chicken box. Chicken box that's caused by virus infections. Like the people usually got to chicken box very young, uh, like uh, under 10 years old, that's most the case. 
But after people recover after chicken box, like after they go to abuse, they may cause uh, get another illness we call hyper, yeah, hyper. That's the same virus. Yeah, that's the same virus. That's, that virus, they recover after chicken box, but, but they hide it inside the cells, basically inside the nervous cell. And they hide in there for a long term. And when people immunity system deficiency situation and happens, they will like uh, recopy again, yeah, recopy, reproduction, recopy again, and cause the uh, illness. So that's the uh, full possible after cells got infections by the virus. Uh, first three is more severe, but um, last one look like no change in there right now but still have more risk cause the illness later. So infection for the patients, yeah, infection for the patients is pretty similar uh, like the infection to the cell, but we just looking from the like a whole body aspect. So go to inside of the body first. And then they call get a copy or reproductions. And the same times they damage the cells. And then after they copy, they spend the virus go to other cells. And uh, during this time, yeah, during this time, our body immunity systems will have some response, yeah, response. So that's we still talking about the balance. If our immunity systems is strong, it will be killed by bacteria. The people will be recovered. If the immunity systems compare with virus, is let be weaker there, will cause the some illness. And the first some illness after treatment, they may totally recover. That's, that kind of illness we call acute infection. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, like after the treatment, mainly symptoms is relieved but still have some symptoms, or maybe even without symptoms, but sometimes maybe some virus still hiding inside the body for a long time. So that's basically the infection for the people. So that's basically we talking about the virus part, the virus part and the virus infections. Okay, so let's still go to our radio to see the virus. Today we will be talking about virus. A virus is a tiny infectious agent that reproduces inside the cells of living hosts. When infected, the host cell is forced to rapidly produce thousands of identical copies of the original virus. Unlike most living things, viruses do not have cells that divide. New viruses assemble in the infected host cell. Virus contain genes which allow them to mutate and evolve. Over 4,800 species of viruses have been described in detail out of the millions in the environment. Their origin is unclear. Some may have evolved from plasmids. It is pieces of DNA that can move between cells. 
while others may have evolved from bacteria. Viruses are made of either two or three parts. All include genes. These genes contain the encoded biological information of the virus and are built from either DNA or RNA. All viruses are also covered with a protein coat to protect the genes. Some viruses may also have an envelope fat-like substance that covers the protein coat and makes them vulnerable to soap. A virus with this viral envelope uses it along with specific receptors to enter a new host cell. Viruses vary in shape from the simple helical and icosahedral to more complex structures. Viruses range in size from 20 to 300 nanometers. It would take 33,000 to 500,000 of them, side by side, to stretch to 1 centimeter, 0.4 in. Viruses spread in many ways. Some viruses of humans and other animals are spread by exposure to infected bodily fluids. Viruses such as influenza are spread through the air by droplets of moisture when people cough or sneeze. Viruses such as norovirus are transmitted by the fecal, oral route, which involves the contamination of hands, food, and water. Rotavirus is often spread by direct contact with infected children. The human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, is transmitted by bodily fluids transferred during sex. Others, such as the dengue virus, are spread by blood-sucking insects. Viruses, especially those made of RNA, can mutate rapidly to give rise to new types. Hosts may have little protection against such new forms. Influenza virus, for example, changes often. So a new vaccine is needed each year. Major changes can cause pandemics. As in the 2009 swine influenza that spread to most countries. Often, these mutations take place when the virus has first infected other animal hosts. Some examples of such zoonotic diseases include coronavirus in bats and influenza in pigs and birds. Before those viruses were transferred to humans, viral infections can cause disease in humans, animals and plants. In healthy humans and animals, infections are usually eliminated by the immune system which can provide lifetime immunity to the host for that virus. Antibiotics, which work against bacteria, have no impact. But antiviral drugs can treat life-threatening infections. Those vaccines that produce lifelong immunity can prevent some infections. The invention of the electron microscope in 1931 brought the first images of viruses. Viruses are among the smallest infectious agents and are too small to be seen by light microscopy. Most of them can only be seen by electron microscopy. They range in size from 20 to 300 nanometers. In contrast, bacteria are usually about 1000 nanometers, 1 micron, in diameter. And host cells of advanced organisms are usually dozens of microns. Some viruses, such as the big virus and Pandora virus, are relatively large viruses. These viruses were found in 2003 and 2013 respectively. They are about 10 times wider than the flu virus and therefore a thousand times larger. The discovery of these giant viruses surprised scientists. Genes The genes of viruses are made from DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and in many viruses, RNA, ribonucleic acid. The biological information contained in an organism is encoded in its DNA or RNA. Most organisms use DNA. But many viruses have RNA as their genetic material. The DNA or RNA of viruses consists of either a single strand or a double helix. Viruses can reproduce rapidly. Because they have relatively few genes. For example, influenza virus has only 8 genes and rotavirus has 11. In comparison, humans have 20,000 to 25,000. Some viral genes contain the code to make the structural proteins that form the virus particle. Other genes make non-structural proteins found only in the cells the virus infects. 
all cells, and many viruses. Produce proteins that are enzymes that drive chemical reactions. Some of these enzymes, called DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase, make new copies of DNA and RNA. A virus's polymerase enzymes are often much more efficient at making DNA and RNA than the equivalent enzymes of the host cells. But viral RNA polymerase enzymes are error-prone, causing RNA viruses to mutate and form new strains. In some species of RNA virus, the genes are not on a continuous molecule of RNA, but are separated. The influenza virus, for example, has eight separate genes made of RNA. When two different strains of influenza virus infect the same cell, these genes can mix and produce new strains of the virus in a process called reassortment. Protein Synthesis Proteins are essential to life. Cells produce new protein molecules from amino acid building blocks. Based on information coded in DNA, each type of protein is a specialist that usually only performs one function. So if a cell needs to do something new, it must make a new protein. Viruses force the cell to make new proteins that the cell does not need, but are needed for the virus to reproduce. Protein synthesis consists of two major steps. Transcription and translation. Transcription is the process where information in DNA, called the genetic code, is used to produce RNA copies called messenger RNA, mRNA. These migrate through the cell and carry the code to ribosomes, where it is used to make proteins. This is called translation, because the protein's amino acid structure is determined by the MRNAS code. Information is hence translated from the language of nucleic acids to the language of amino acids. Life Cycle when a virus infects a cell, the virus forces it to make thousands more viruses. It does this by making the cell copy the virus's DNA or RNA, making viral proteins, which all assemble to form new virus particles. Effects on the host cell Viruses have an extensive range of structural and biochemical effects on the host cell. Most virus infections eventually result in the death of the host cell. The causes of death include cell lysis, bursting, alterations to the cell's surface membrane and apoptosis, cell suicide. Often cell death is caused by cessation of its normal activity due to proteins produced by the virus, not all of which are components of the virus particle. Some viruses cause no apparent changes to the infected cell. Cells in which the virus is latent, inactive show few signs of infection and often function normally. This causes persistent infections and the virus is often dormant for many months or years. This is often the case with herpes viruses. This is the basic knowledge about virus. So that's the basically we're talking about the virus and their structures and how the reproduction is, how they infected the human beings. Then we talk about the host defections. So that means the bodies against the virus. So, similar like virus, bacteria, the virus is still everywhere. Yeah, the virus is still everywhere. Like on our skin, on the air, everywhere. But usually they are not caused the illness because our body has immunity functions, have defense functions. So we say when we are against the virus, basically we have two affected. 
one aspect is we call it no specific, yeah, no specific. Similar, we talking about like against the bacterial, the bacterial. And another part we call it specific, yeah, specific. So no special fit, yeah, no special fit uh, defining functions, uh, we have five aspects. They will have special part when we're talking about immunity. Right, uh, in here, we just got some basic idea, but we will talk about some detail later. Uh, so these five aspects, yeah, uh, they have alpha or beta interference. Yeah, they have NK cells. Yeah, they have fetal fetal surfaces. Yeah, they have alpha deficiencies. So that's basically some special material or cells functions. And the inside of our body, uh, we have a lot of tract, like a respiration tract or digestion tract. Mainly in the respiration tract, inside of respiration tract memory. So basically, they have pretty, pretty tiny small of hair in there. So that's still kind of a defending function in there. So this small tiny tiny kind of hair can try to removing or do some clearing function. So that's in the superficial of the memory. Yeah. Another aspect is the fever. So fever still belong to all bodies defending functions try to relieve or kill the virus or even some bacteria. So because the bacteria or virus, they specially living in some special environments, including temperature. So when temperature getting let it be higher here for some bacteria or virus, is not suitable for their living or reproduction anymore. So that's kind of reactions for the passenger reading belong to all body, no special fake defendings. Yeah, just a little bit detail for each aspect of no special kind of defendings in here. Like we talk about, we still talking about the more detail. Later on, when we talking about the immunity system, then they maybe come back. Right now, just gave you some basic idea in this basic idea. Then we talking about the special fake defections. Yeah, special fake defections. No special kind of uh, defenses means they will protect it of ourselves, not, not special for some bacteria or some virus. They will protect it for all the bacteria or maybe all the virus. But when we talking about special fake, a special fake, means we specially go to special kind of bacteria or maybe special kind of virus. So in this part, we have two ways. Yeah, we have two ways. One way we call active immunity. Another way we call positive immunity. So that's basically the special fake part. 
So active immunity, yeah, active immunity. Thus, basically, we're talking about the vaccines, yeah, vaccines. So vaccines means we use some killed virus or some special kind of protein in the virus or maybe some weaker virus. So generally say we keep some chemical structure in there but it will not cause the truly illness. Then give the people by the different way. Some of them maybe we just already, yeah, take it, yeah. Some of them maybe injections, yeah, injection. But whatever use we use the weaker virus. We maybe use the killed virus, but the structure in there, or maybe we only use the protein, yeah, protein. And then we give the people. Similar like the people got are sick, yeah, or illness away, but this virus is not truly cause the people sick. It caused our, our immunity systems reactions. So then our immunity system's reaction will produce antibody. And uh, later on, when next time people meet with this kind of special virus, the antibody will kill them, will kill them. So this way, yeah, this way, we call it active immunity, yeah, active immunity. So if patients have sick or illness, generally say, they still producing antibody. And the next time, the antibody is still against the special virus. But we just try to protect it like uh, people will not have this kind of illness. So that's what they say, give the patient antigen, yeah, weaker or killed or some J structure of the antigen and uh, trigger or cause our immunity system reactions producing antibody. That's the way we, we name it, active immunity, the active immunity. So, so we'll no, no, no. go ahead. Some question? No? Okay. So that's we say we have three reasons uh, use active immunity, but generally speaking, we just try to trigger our immunity systems producing antibody. We will talk about some detail in later, we especially go to immune systems. That's active immunity. Then we're talking about positive immunity. Yeah, positive immunity. So positive immunity means we directly go give the patient special kind of antibody, special kind of antibody. So antibody is a protein, a special kind of protein. So that's in this way, we try to protect it of the patient. So we say usually antibody only happens when second time people got uh, the same illness or same virus infection. Or maybe after, like uh, we gave the patient like uh, some antigen in there, 
and then trigger and then cause some antibody later. But if patient never got the same illness before, and then they get sick, some various infections, we try to get immediately our immunity system reactions. What do we do? We directly use the antibody that will directly kill the virus. So this way, yeah, this way, we say that's a positive kind of immunity. So positive kind of immunity uh, look like uh, immediate reaction compared with active. Yeah. We say active kind of immunity. Usually, like uh, after you give the patients a vaccine, they need about seven to 14 days. Uh, it's depending, yeah, different kind of reaction there. But the generalists say it's kind of for seven to 14 days, then they producing antibody. And uh, then they waiting, uh, next time patient got the same illness, the antibody will be working. But the positive, yeah, positive kind of uh, immunity look like a working factor, yeah. Uh, people getting sick, yeah, people getting sick or illness, we can immediately use antibody, urine injection, yeah, urine is the injection way. And then immediately kill the virus, immediately kill the virus. But the difference, yeah, but the difference, uh, we know the antibody is coming from the special kind of protein. You like the living time, yeah, the living time pretty short, yeah, pretty short. Uh, so something around 10 days, yeah, something around 10 days. So that means if during these uh, 10 days, patient got a sick or illness, that antibody will be working. If after 10 days, the antibody is coming from the other source, maybe coming from some animals, maybe coming from laboratory producing. It's not the person itself truly producing. So that is not a long term in there. So they will disappear after 10 days. If you try to go to immunity, you need to continue the use, continue the use. So that's the difference. But for active kind of immunity, they have some memory in there like the passenger, same passenger immediately, they immediately, immediately producing a lot of, lot of antibody. So that's the difference, uh, active immunity and positive immunity. So that's basically talking about our immunity reactions. Uh, for the bacterial, yeah, for the bacterial, uh, we need an identity for what kind of bacteria. So we can use, still can use cells culture. We know bacteria only living inside the cells. We need a cells culture. And we can identify this microscope, but we're talking about basically we need the electrical kind of microscope. Bacteria are so smaller. And we use, we can use special use like a blood test, yeah, blood test. We test for some antibodies, yeah. So after virus infection, they're producing some antibody. Then we test the antibody to identify. And we also can try to find like some virus antigen you still use blood test to try to identify. Or maybe some virus, a nuclear acid, like DNA or RNA, and then they got the diagnosis. 
so that some there's some detail here you can uh, get a basically some idea or understanding. Uh, so the drugs, yeah, so the drug medication. We have some medication antivirus, but not that effective uh, for bacteria. Like uh, antibiotics, maybe one kind of antibiotics, they can kill a lot of different kinds of bacteria. But for the virus, they can get some of the bacteria, but not that effective. And some virus infection truly not have effective medication can cure the bacteria. For, uh, for example, right now we still talk about COVID-19, still not have effective bacteria or antivirus drug can cure it. So that's uh, generally, yeah, generally we're talking about, but we still try to use some medication to kill the virus. So medication or drugs part, uh, we're still talking about some detail after or midterm, okay, after or midterm. Virus vaccine. So virus vaccine is no effective way to prevent virus infection. That can like uh, cause our immune system's uh, reactions and producing antibody. But uh, truly sometimes they still can use positive kind of immunity against the virus. But not all the virus, they have effective vaccine. Yeah, vaccine is most uh, very, very producing. So active immunity, we talked about already. And the positive immunity, uh, some detail here. So we still talk about more detail later. And sometimes the combination use positive and active immunity together. So that's we just name it, positive and active immunity. In some special kind of situation, we need immediately some immunity reaction in there, and we also need long-term protections. So that's the combination positive and active together. So that's for today's class. We're talking about basically Virus. Any 